This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform to build your online presence. Well, ahoy there, cruisers, and welcome on board Margaritaville at Sea. This is the cheapest cruise we've ever booked, $150 each, and it's the oldest ship we have ever sailed. Should we do this? Come with us. Let's go back to the beginning to see how we got on board. So this morning, our cruise actually departs from the port of Palm Beach. Never been there before, so we're going to grab the Bright Line, which is a new train service, all the way to West Palm Beach. The trains are super fancy, we've all checked in and everything, but do be aware you have to now pay for bags, which is a bit annoying. The $10 each. Never had to pay for a bag to get on a, on a train before, so that's a little bit disappointing. And the prices on here are quite expensive now as well, so if they do want to run this really successfully, I think they need to reduce the prices and stop charging for things like bags, because that's a bit silly. But the trains are lovely, super easy way to get to West Palm Beach and Fort Lauderdale as well. It does stop there as well. So if you've got a cruise there and are coming from Miami, it's a great option too. I'm oh, going to sit back, relax. Can't wait to get on Margaritaville. Very intrigued to see what it's going to be like. So let's go, shall we? It's about an hour train journey. So super relaxed, super quick. Yes, and we've actually booked standard and it's really nice, really super spacious, big seats, nice and plush, and it's a very bright cabin. Yeah. We're just arriving in West Palm Beach. Let's go get on the ship. So we've arrived at the port of Palm Beach. Oh my gosh, it's very small. The ship is tiny. Now this is the oldest ship, like we said, that we've ever been on before. It's almost as old as us. So we've just checked our bags. Do bear in mind, unlike any other cruise line we've been on in over 80 cruises, that they actually weighed every piece of luggage and it has to be under 50 pounds. You get two items per person and if you're over the 50 pounds that you're checking in you have to pay a $25 fee so do bear that in mind it's quite steep I guess this is how they make their money with it being such a, a cheap cruise so anyway we're gonna go drop off our bags and get on the ship let's go ready to go here we go getting on board <laughs> I don't know what to expect guys let's do this right we are on the ship at last that was very very quick check-in was super easy so we went to the check-in desk showed our passports and things. Then we went to the little section to board. It was really funny because just before you got on, there was loads of desks where you could book everything like your dining, spas and things like that. So let's go explore. I'm really hungry. Let's go get some food first of all. We haven't ate all day. Cabins are ready at one. It's about 11.30 now, so we are on quite early. First impressions of the ship, she does look old. She's tiny as well, but she looks very bright and colorful. Can't wait to explore to see what's on board. This elevator is really old. It's quite quirky actually. It's kind of like stepping back in time a little bit. I'm getting I, flashbacks of childhood. I know, I don't hate it. It's just very retro, isn't it? I think that's a lovely Fun way to put it. Retro. Yeah, it's nice. a retro cruise. Fun fact, this was an Italian ship originally and the lifts are still in Italian. It's like Arriva Dirce, Deck 10. Treat yourself anyway, we're here at the buffet, Deck 10. But very interested to see what's on the menu. So let's go grab some food. Like I said, we haven't ate anything today, so we are starving. So come on guys, let's go get some food. The hand washing stations are interesting. Industrial chic, I think they call it. Cool, so this is the Port of Indecision buffet. We've came straight here. It's a small buffet because it's a very small ship. I think it only holds like 1,500 people or so. There's a selection of food. It's not going to be as good as things like Royal Caribbean and Norwegian because it's a lot cheaper and it's a different type of cruise really. It's just a quick getaway cruise. It's a very basic buffet, but that's exactly what we expected. But it's filthy. Everything's really dirty. Yeah, so the floor's very dirty. It looks like it hasn't been cleaned even though we're the first passengers on, but hey. To put it politely though, it does look a little bit depressing. I mean, we know what we're getting ourselves in for, guys. So, I mean, it is a cheaper cruise. You've got to remember it only cost us about $150 each, so we're not expecting miracles. But that's still $75 a night, and you can get cruises like that on Royal Caribbean and Norwegian easily. So we're just going to see how it is, because it isn't that cheap when you think of how short the cruise is. It's just 48 hours, but yeah, a little bit depressing, but we'll give it a go anyway. Let's go get some food shall we? I am very hungry. So I played it safe and I got a salad. Actually, to be fair, the salad station is quite big and uh, none of the hot selections really tickled my taste buds, to be honest. I did fancy the soup, but there was no ladle in the soup. So I, I just got a bread roll in a bowl. I didn't know if you were supposed to like dunk the bowl in to get the soup. I'm guessing they just forgot to put the ladle out. It's fine, it's just a salad. Pretty hard to mess up a salad, isn't it? And I also went for a little bit of the international cheese selection of cheddar, white cheddar, or whiter cheddar. Oh, so I went for the American classic, so I went for a hot dog. You know me, I can't resist a sausage, can I? So I got a nice hot dog and some fries as well. Pretty simple, pretty basic. It does look a little bit sad, guys, I'm not gonna lie. It's just a hot dog, but with lovely sauteed onions in there. I'm gonna finish this, my first meal on board Margaritaville, hey? Tick. 
What is that taste? Did you have to taste the same? Yes. What is that taste? Ah, so that's lunch done, guys. Now, I've been meaning to go on a diet for a while, so this ship is going to be good for me because that wasn't the best. I mean, we haven't got on board to complain. We really haven't, but that was pretty shoddy, to be fair. But we're going to give it the benefit of the doubt. We've only just got on. We always know that boarding day lunches in the buffet can be madness on any ship, so it might just be the same on this one as well. It was very, very busy up there in the end. I was a little embarrassed to speak because we had so many people talking around us. It's still embarrassing doing this vlogging business, you know, sometimes. Anyway, let's have a look around the ship and see what it has to offer, shall we? Excited to look around. I want to know where you get this food from. I know, my, the burgers did not look like that, David. <laughs> I know. And where, can I get these tacos, please? Because they look really good. <laughs> they look amazing, David. Oh my God, the lift's broken. The lift's oh, stopped. Oh, deck nine. It's, it's okay. Okay, she said vodka tonic, it's deck nine. Vodka tonic. Submit in Italian. Bye then. And I need to leave before I get... Oh gosh, I'm going to get trapped. Oh, this is very... I can smell a spa. Oh, so we came up to deck nine. This is called the Love and Look deck. There's fancy little names for every deck. Well, guys, what can I say apart from welcome to 1998? Because it does look a bit 90s in here. It does look a little bit like a ferry, I have to say. Not in a bad way. It's very clean. It's very... The furniture all looks in good condition. It just does look a little bit dated, more like a ferry. There's a pizzeria on board, Frank and Lola's Pizzeria. It serves complimentary pizza after 5 p.m. Just two choices, cheese and pepperoni. There's other selections as well, but you have to pay from them. They start from 6 99 and then on the other side, you've got a coffee shop as well. The prices do look pretty reasonable. It's closed. I'm not sure why it's closed because I would love a coffee right now, I've got to say. And there's lots of seating areas. It does, again, look very 90s, guys. But this is what you've got to expect with a really old ship. Uh, there is snacks as well in the coffee shop, but they're an extra pair item as well. So you don't get them included like other cruise lines. This is the difference between this type of cruising and the main cruising lines as well, because Margaritaville only have one ship. This is called the Margaritaville Paradise, and it's one of a kind at the moment. But hey, nice and quiet in here at the moment anyway. Surprisingly, there's a lot of shops with loads of different Margaritaville branded stuff. They sell everything really, everything related to paradise. So you can get hats, sunglasses, shoes, all that stuff. And of course, you're going to have a casino as well. There's a pretty big casino here on Margaritaville Paradise. It's quite a large one. Lots of tables, lots of machines and stuff as well. We've already run into a few people who are very drunk, guys. So I'm guessing this is a bit of a booze cruise as well. Maybe booze, cruise and gambling. We're just heading up to the Oasis room now, whatever that is. Should we have a quick look to see what that is? Yeah, very small ship. It's very easy to get about. That's one good thing about small ships. The very back of the ship is the Oasis room and it's a lounge. Lovely, big, bright windows. That's my only positive. <laughs> it's quite bland, actually. I thought the ship was going to be overly themed with Margaritaville, but it's not. There is a little bit here and there, but it does look like a really big lounge space. Again, back to the 90s, my favourite era. Get that vibe from in there, because it is an older ship. We built our website using Squarespace, and it saved us so much time and effort. You too can build a beautiful website using Squarespace. It's just so easy. There's loads of customizable templates and dynamic layouts. It takes just minutes to put together pages complete with images, videos, text, and SEO optimization. We used to dread making changes and adding more content. It was always such a faff, but not anymore. Highlights for us are the powerful blogging tools. We can quickly categorize content and engage with our viewers through the comment system. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial, and then when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash Ben and David to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Yeah, like David said, I was expecting it to be a little bit more Caribbean-y just because we've been to the Margaritaville Hotel and stayed there in Orlando. And we've also been to the Margaritaville Resort on Bahamas as well. And that was beautiful, fantastic theming. This is not as much so, so they haven't done as much work here. Maybe it's just because it's their first ship, but I can imagine if they did the theming really well, it would be a really lovely ship. But yeah, it does look so retro, guys. I haven't seen anything like this for a long time. The oldest ship we've been on, and yeah, you can really tell, she is dated to heck. She's been around the block a few times, I think, should we just say. Ding dong, the 90s called, what the heck? It looks like the 1990s threw up all in here. It's not horrible, it's just very, very dated, guys. Oh my gosh, it is hilarious. I feel like we're being transported to the past. This is what I imagined cruising was going to be like before we ever started cruising. And this is probably what it was like 30 years ago, but hey. Just outside the theatre, we've came down one deck to the Stars on the Water bar. It is so retro, guys. 
It's absolutely hilarious. I keep having flashbacks to going to holiday resorts as a kid because the furniture just really reminds me of that sort of era. Wow, well, these seats look very interesting. Oh my gosh, David, do I look like a giant sat here? I don't think these are kid seats either. This is the bar. But yeah, five seats around a little pedestal. This is absolutely hilarious. Total flashbacks from the 90s, loving it. It's really, really funny. It looks like somebody's chopped the feet off the cocktail tables. It does. They're I'm really like, short. I feel crazy. I feel very unsophisticated sat here. It's hilarious. Oh my gosh, what <laughs> is this like? With your backpack as well, you look like little explorers. <laughs> Dora the Explorer, exploring the ship. This is hilarious, guys. This is so funny. I'm loving it. It is a very... This is definitely an experience, let me tell you that. At the very front of the ship on deck eight is the Stars on the Water Theatre. It's surprisingly big, it's huge, and they do have production shows on here. There's a Jimmy Buffett show, and then there's also a comedian as well. So we're looking forward to seeing what they have to offer for us. Ooh, what's this? I see a knob on the horizon. You know me, I can't help but touch things, guys. I'm not sure what this actually does, but it's fun. And um, then, I think it's an art piece. I shouldn't have really touched it. Margaritaville art piece commissioned. It's a wooden box with a knob on top. I'm not kidding you, it says name of artist David. The famous David did that beautiful piece of art, renowned by the Tate, now here on Margaritaville at sea, the wooden box with a knob on it. One positive is that there is lots of windows, which is really good, so you can see out and there's lots of light coming in, which is great to see. So just behind me in the centre on deck number eight, you've got the Euphoria bar, which is a gigantic bar, lots of seating areas, as well as that bar. And there's a screen and what appears to be maybe live music later on. And then just next to that, you've got the Fins, which is the main dining room. Should we go have a look? So Fins is the main dining room on board and it's located here on deck eight. It's huge, it's a really big space. It is really bright because of all of those lovely big windows. So yeah, it looks quite modernized. And just next door, you have the Steakhouse as well, which is an extra charge for $65 per person. This one is complimentary, but does have some extra pay items on the menu as well. There's loads of seating areas with lovely big windows. That's one thing that you see on older ships that you've kind of lost on newer ships now. You don't see as many sea views, unfortunately. So that's a little point for this ship because I like it. I like to be able to see out into the ocean. Ooh, fancy. Personalized window blinds. It's very, very fancy. It's gonna take about four hours, David. I'll come back. The poor crew that I've got to walk down and put them all back up as well. Come on, David, we've, we've got to go now. Oh, and she's done. It only took 45 minutes, but it killed a little bit of time until the cabins are ready. Come with us on the most antique elevator in America. It's a bit small. Sorry, it's I'm a bit, bit close. It's a bit tight in here, isn't it? I think people were thinner back then. <laughs> <laughs> so we're trying to find the five o'clock somewhere bar, but we can't. But guys, on deck 10, it's terrifying. You can see all the way down to the lowest deck. Oh my gosh. You know I don't love heights. That is terrifying. <laughs> right, let's go find this. It says access from deck 11, even though it's deck 10 on the map, but we'll, we'll go find it. We'll get there in the end, won't we? It's five o'clock somewhere all the time, so it's not like we're gonna miss five o'clock. When they said lost in paradise, I was picturing a tropical beach, not ship from the 1990s. I'm just gonna have a look around the spa area and have a look at the gym. You know, just have a look at it. Just say we've been. Yeah, so there's a whole spa and salon on board, as well as the gym here at the front of the ship. And it's really, really nice, really modern equipment. You've got some weights and lifting machines as well, as well as all of the normal cardio stuff, but it's lovely, really bright. The aircon on board the ship is really good as well. This is something that we worried about because some of the older ships have terrible aircon, especially in warm weather, like here in the Caribbean and Florida, but yeah, really nice. I'm impressed with the gym. Still not gonna come here, but it's there if you do wanna use it, you crazy people. What the heck is this? You've got an AstroTurf walkway? Bit of like a fashion show, isn't it, Ben? Yeah, David, strut your stuff. What the heck is this? AstroTurf as well. It's very strange indeed. So bizarre. Got to walk back now. <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to the outdoor decks, there's actually quite a lot of space. I don't think I've ever seen so much AstroTurf in my life. It's very strange, but there's a small pool, which is the family pool area. Then at the very back of the ship, you've got a lovely bar called the 12 volt bar, as well as an adults only area. There's two hot tubs here and a larger pool. I really like this area. It looks really, really kind of like vintage and cool. Very nice indeed. Weather's gorgeous today as well. We are so lucky with the weather. Oh, I have missed this Florida sunshine so much. 
And at the very front of the ship on deck 10, hidden away, you do have to find it, go across deck uh, 11 and 12 to get down to here, is the five o'clock somewhere bar. This is kind of the thing I was expecting. It's quite well themed in there. It looks like a margaritaville that you'd find on land. Great views from the front of the ship. It looks really busy in there. I think this is going to be the most popular place on the ship. At the very top of the ship, you've got something called the Hangout. I'm not exactly sure what it is. It's really cool. It's got views all the way around. Maybe like a dance floor and club or something like that. Oh, so we're going to have a nice little seat after we've done that little tour of the ship, guys. It's so small, it was so quick to take you around. Rooms aren't ready yet. They said between one and two, and it's half past one at the moment. So hopefully we're going to see them soon, and we're going to take you on a full tour. I got the soda package. Only $29 for the whole cruise for the two days. Guys, I mean, come on, look at that. Isn't that just fabulous? You get a little red, red dot on your card to show that you've got the soda package. There are other packages available. I think it was $99 for the alcohol package, but it's such a short cruise and we've got so much to film. We're not gonna drink on this one, but how cool is that? See you later, alligator. In a while, crocodile. Also, there are kids clubs on board. They are complimentary, but only up until 5 p.m. Then they close and then they reopen from 6.30 p.m. onwards. But there is a charge if you do put your kids in the kids club after 6.30. Also, this is an old ship, so we are gonna to touch on the accessibility. It's very poor. There is lifts, there is elevators, but parts of the ship are completely inaccessible if you're in a chair or if you have reduced mobility, because there is a lot of stairs to get around. So that's our tour of the Margaritaville Paradise. Have you been on this ship before? Let us know in the comments section below and let us know what you think about it as well. Or have you been on this ship when it used to sail for different cruise lines, when it was a Costa ship maybe? We'd love to hear what you think. Two o'clock, the rooms are ready. Let's take you around our cabin here on the Margaritaville at sea. Well, first impressions are not as bad as I thought. First things first, it is very spacious, very roomy actually, lovely big space. But then when you start to look at the details, it does start to show its age, unfortunately. And it is a little rough around the edges. What do they call it in, in property terms? It's a doer upper. We're in cabin 6089. It's just a standard ocean view cabin. Should we start with the very beginning, David? Not many balconies on this ship. It's an old ship. Most of the cabins are interiors or ocean views. When I said about you start to look into the details and then you realise it's quite rough around the edges. <laughs> wow. <laughs> this bathroom is... Whew, where do I start? It's a... Uh, that door as well, David. Look at it. Try pulling yeah, it. It's, it um, pulls off the wall. The bathroom's seen better days, guys. It, I'm not going to lie. It's a dump. <laughs> the... the it, and it smells like one as well. Oh my gosh, guys, it really does smell like poop. If you had smell of vision you would not be liking this now. It's making the whole cabin smell. But yeah, you've got a, a showered curtain, so that will stick to you. There is at least a shower gel, shampoo and conditioner. And to be honest, it's not a bad size. It really no. isn't a bad size on the bright side. But it is just old and very, very rough. Like, it's sort of wearing away around the edges now. The mirror is chipped and cracked. That shower, I'm I'm terrified about going in that no, shower. No, you're not. Stop being a princess. When you close the curtain, it's pitch black. There's no light in the shower. But yeah, the bathroom is the worst. Oh my, part. David, I can't get off that door. It is legitimately hanging off the wall. Just look at it. It's hilarious. <laughs> and I mean, just check out the, the light switches. Like, what is going on? Like retro, <laughs> like little squares. I feel like it's something from Star Trek, the original series. <laughs> very, very retro. On a plus side, you've got absolutely tons of storage. The, this is huge. But if you were ever wondering which cruise line this ship used to be part of. Look no further. We found it. Costa. Costa Cruises. I wonder if they got them included in the sale for free. David, I know. think that coat hanger might be older than you. I am I, not kidding. I'm, do you know what? I'm actually tempted to steal it and put it on eBay to no see how much not. I can get for it. It's a vintage Costa Cruises coat hanger. But yeah, plenty of room in there. There's some yeah. drawers in there as well. And then you've got a cupboard here which has life jackets in it as well as a little, a little safe. safe. But I mean, you're not going to be... I mean, we're not even going to unpack. These cruises are very short. One or two nights, so you're not really needing that much space, but you do have a lot. A hairdryer in here. There is a mini fridge. 
I mean, it's it's a little manky around the edges, I'm not gonna lie. It does look a bit dirty in there. Yeah, it looks its edge. But like we said, it's a beautiful big space. <laughs> You've got a huge space in here, lots, lots and lots of space. Vanity area. They have actually put a USB charger in and a USB-C and one North Amer is that a North American no, outlet? No, it's European. European. So there is a power outlet on the floor. There's one North American and one European near the floor. So you'd, I would recommend bringing a power bank, especially if you are from the US. Make sure it's not surge protected because they will take that off you. But you can get power banks that are not surge protected off Amazon or even just bring an adapter from European to North American and you can get them for a couple of dollars on Amazon as well. Yeah, you can get the ones that plug into European and US sockets that have like three or four USBs in them. Yeah. That's probably the best idea, but honestly, it's such a short cruise, you're not gonna really have a problem. No, you're really not. What is that behind you, David? So this is another, is this another wardrobe space. Oh. Oh my gosh, no. It's a bed. It's a bed. Oh, how would, I've always wanted to do one of these. Can I do it? No, because it says on that sign, do it not must do be done by onboard staff. Okay, well that's another bed in there. That's unusual. Not seen that before. But I do notice the wallpaper is a little bit groggy. It's starting to peel away yeah. from the wall already. I do have the vibe that they have sort of tried to spruce it up as much as they can, but actually without doing much to the cabin. So it is a little bit like papering over the cracks almost. Putting lipstick on a pig. Oh my that's... gosh, David, that's harsh. <laughs> it's, oh, it's not that bad, okay? It is just very old. It's showing its age yeah. and you can tell and they have just sort of like tried to spruce it up a little bit and it's um, starting to still show its age. They have water in here as well. They will charge you $4.95 for it. So just just be aware. Pricey. I know, and they're very strict on bringing drinks on board. You are not allowed to bring any liquids on board. So no waters, no sodas, and definitely no alcohol. They did make a very big point of that when we were scanning our bags through the scanner, but I may have actually snuck on some bottles of water by accident, so whoopsie. Sorry, not sorry. That light behind you doesn't work either. We can't figure out how to turn it on. I know, maybe it's like... No. no. <laughs> one plus side huge bed really really big and actually quite comfortable maybe this is a new mattress because it does feel very nice i do like the bedding as well it's margaritable bedding it's got little parrots on it it does look really nice actually the bed is really big it can split into twins if mm -hmm. you don't want it in the queen configuration as well which is great and we took a while to figure out how to turn these lights on above us it's actually hidden behind here David, there's no chargers beside the beds. There are two little cabinets. That phone does have a USB charger in the side of it, but there's not on my side of the bed. Boo hoo. I mean, Ben, this ship was built in 1991. What would they have been charging? Did they even have cell phones in 1991? Cassette players, maybe? Little They're Walkman? Sony Walkmans? Stepper size machine? One of those things that, do you remember those things you used to put around you and it vibrated? A record really... player? I don't know, David. What did they have back in the day? I know. I don't think they had CD players, Ben. Well, it's good to see that in 1991, they had really big flat screen TVs. It's fantastic, <laughs> isn't it? Clearly these have been added after. Nice big TV, it actually has loads of channels on here, like ABC, Fox, is Fox still going? TBS, all them other ones. And a lovely big porthole window. It is actually really bright in here. Sometimes with porthole cabins, it can feel a little bit dark, but actually it feels lovely and bright. There is one tiny thing though, it is a blind, but it's not a blackout blind. So that is gonna be quite bright in the morning, I think. Where's the switch? There's no switch, David, it's a pull cord. Don't be silly. <sighs> oh, that's not too bad to be fair. Yeah, it's not too bad, but I do like my room like pitch black, but it's not too bad. I've just noticed on the TV as well, it says, welcome Canely Lamb. Now who the heck is that? Because that is not us, David. Uh, do you think they're joining us later? Oh, I don't know, it is. I did say it was a big bed. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's hilarious, isn't it? I've got to say the air conditioning as well, really, really good as well, because we've been on some old ships, even Royal Caribbean ships like the Allure of the Seas, where the air con isn't that good, but it's very, very strong in here. It's lovely and cool. Anyway, we're going to unpack a few bits of our equipment. We're not going to bother unpacking we're just going to live out a suitcase for two nights they are just arriving now which is really great they're arriving one by one and then we're going to go head up for the muster drill so that's the drill that you have to do the safety drill and then for sail away and some dinner so make sure you join us for all of that fun here on margaritaville paradise we ask that you read the emergency instruction notice 
Emergency. Emergency. Paging Dr. Beat. Emergency. David, it's a safety drill. Let's go Let's do it, go. shall we? Ugh. Safety drill time. We know it's a pain in the butt, but safety first. This is just something you've got to do on every cruise ship. Super important you do it. There's a video on our TV. We've got to go up to deck nine uh, really quickly and do our safety drill. It's just basically going to show us how to wear a life jacket and where to go in an emergency. We go to deck nine into one of the bars. It's all like manual pen and paper. What the heck was that safety briefing? The strangest thing ever. Oh my gosh, that was completely and utterly bizarre. So that was the muster drill. It took forever and it was completely disorganized. And weirdly, it was all manual. So they had to count everybody in the room and there must have been seven, 800 people in there. It was complete chaos and lasted for ages. And they said some really strange things such as they have an adequate amount of lifeboats for everybody and that they're unsinkable. And all I was thinking was, oh my God, don't say that after the Titanic. It's not 19 blooming 12 anymore. Really strange guys. And then they said something really weird. In the event of an emergency, we're going to prioritize the sick women and children to get off the ship first. And we were like, what if you're a single dad? But not only that, but how demeaning to women is that? It is not the bloody 1910s. It's crazy. Women could be as strong as men and get off the ship as quickly as men. It's, it's crazy. And to think that we'd be put into a corner while everybody else was getting off is just absolutely nuts. I mean, it is legitimately 2023, the need to get with the program, so to say. But that was crazy. I have absolutely no faith that that an evacuation on this ship would be um, successful. It was just half the passengers were drunk and shirtless and wearing bathing suits. It was just crazy. I've never seen anything like it in my life. Honestly, the script was so weirdly worded. It was very, very odd, guys. But to say that women and children and sick, I mean, who's yeah. sick on the ship? I, I don't get that. Like the sick, we're not, um, we're not a hospital. It's very strange. My favorite very bit, odd. My favorite bit was they won't sink even when they flood. Oh my God, yeah. It's unsinkable. They won't sink even if it floods. I hope it doesn't flood. Oh my God. Just heading back to the room now. This ship really does smell like weed, doesn't it, and poop? Yeah, there is, there is certain areas where you get a nice little waft of, of the poop deck. <laughs> it's wild. It really is. I think we're on the poop deck, Ben. It stinks. Oh, there is a great waft. I hope paradise doesn't smell like this, really. Oh my gosh, it smells like wee wee and poo poo. It's not good at all, is it? Guys, I don't want to go on about this too much, but I'm just thinking now, is it even legal? I mean, why should women be punished because they're women, first of all? But isn't that such an archaic old thing from Hollywood or from the 1800s? It's just absolutely crazy to me. It's actually made me really angry and kind of it's like, it's nuts, like it's 2023. Like women and children and those who are sick first. I mean, shouldn't it be just anybody who's in need, regardless of gender, should be the ones that helped first and everybody gets off in an orderly fashion. It's nuts. This is, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm literally shocked. It's absolutely nuts. The sail away from the port of Palm Beach was actually really beautiful. Some of the houses here are absolutely insane. Hopefully one day, I can afford one of them. I doubt it, but we can dream. So we're here in the Finn's main dining room. I am absolutely starving because it's about 1 a.m. in the UK, so we're well past food time. Anyway, we popped our orders in. We've got a bread plate as well. The menu looks really good. It's got some nice Indian dishes on there as well, so I'm looking forward to trying them. We put our drinks orders in as well. So I guess it's time to eat, super excited. For my starters, I got the cauliflower bites. They look really nice, actually. The presentation is very surprisingly good. Well, pour me over ice and call me a margarita. That is really good. It's really tasty, super hot as well. Comes with like a lovely minty sauce. Very good indeed. I'm a little bit impressed, I've got to say. I got the classic shrimp cocktail. I'm gonna give it a little bit of squeeze. Not bad. Nice, decent sized shrimp as well. Get three lovely big pieces of shrimp. So far, a good start to the meal. Oh, and for my second course, I went for the vegetable soup. That's really yummy, very well seasoned. It doesn't need any salt or pepper or anything. It's good soup. You can always rely on soup on cruise ships. You really can. I got the caprese salad. Again, very well presented. One little pet peeve though we've had this on other cruise lines is you have to reuse your knife and forks for each course and it really bothers me. It's just a thing that I just, uh, I've got like fishy forks now with my caprese salad. Actually it tastes quite nice. Uh, the balsamic vinegar is really lovely, nice and fruity and uh, lots and lots of the mozzarella cheese. A little hint of pesto. It's a pretty good caprese salad. 
That's what I mean, quarters of came. I've got to say I'm pretty impressed so far, actually. I've went for the butter chicken. It's an Indian dish and it's one of my favourite dishes. I love this at home all of the time, so should we go in and try it? Really, really tasty. A little bit of a spice there as well. David, I have to say you're also super impressive looking. It looks like you've got a whole platter with like Indian goodness. I've got a personal buffet. Check this out. I've literally got a whole platter of vegetarian Indian selection. So I've got dal, a chickpea and lentil curry, rice with like little yellow bits in it, like pilau rice. And then I've got these two little things and I don't know what this is. Ball. Do you know what that is, Ben? No idea. I'm not keen on that. It's got a little bit of an odd flavour to it. <laughs> what is it? It's like a dessert. Yeah, it's okay. It's a bit... It's fine. It's not great. It's not terrible. It reminds me a lot of, like, Carnival. They have a really similar selection. Oh, so it's the best time of any day. It's dessert time. I went for the le lemon meringue pie. Now, guys, you know I like... Ooh, now you know I like to... Ooh, Helen Mirren playing the queen. That is so sweet. Oh, my gosh, that is incredibly sweet. You know that I love my sweet foods, but that might be a bit too much for me, but I'm really eyeing up David's dessert because it looks absolutely delicious. It's a big chunk of cake. Yeah, portion sizes are really good. I mean, look at the size of my cake. It's huge. I got the Black Forest Gato. It's not like decadent or anything. It's extremely light. I've got to the bit at the bottom now where it's like soaked in. It's a good dessert, a good little cake. I think we're going to head up to bed now. David's not feeling too great, bless him. He had a really bad toothache yesterday when we were in Miami. So we had to go see an emergency dentist and he's got antibiotics and some painkillers for that. It's awful. He's got really horrible pain in his jaw and his teeth. So hopefully he feels a little bit better and those antibiotics kick in to get rid of the infection. Bless him. But we always recommend getting travel insurance, guys. This is why it's so important, just in case something does happen off or on the ship so that you're covered. It could cost you a lot of money. And because we had travel insurance, we're completely covered. We only have to pay a small excess of a few hundred dollars or 150 pounds and that's it and everything else is covered no matter what happens there's much more entertainment than we thought as well there's a live band on in the lounge i didn't know who jimmy buffet was until, until isn't, it, isn't it jimmy buffett i don't know not buffet it, like like a like a food to be fair he hasn't reached the shores of the uk and i didn't even know he was a singer i just thought he was like a chef or something is that bad yes <laughs> well i know now because i was like who's this guy they keep playing on the tv Back in the cabin, yeah, it's bedtime for us, and we'll see you tomorrow. Good morning. Let's go for breakfast. Let's go. Good morning, everybody. Slept really well in the bed. It was a super comfortable bed, and it was very quiet and quite smooth as well, because we were worried because it's an older ship, it might be a bit bumpy, but no, it wasn't. Anyway, we're heading up to the buffet for breakfast. It's the only place open for us on this ship, so let's head up. Hopefully it's quite quiet, because it is 7 a.m., because we still have that little bit of jet lag, so we're up nice and early. Oh, so we've sat down for the buffet and we found a lovely little spot right at the back of the ship outside. We're joined by the carnival legend just opposite us, which we saw come in this morning when we woke up and that was really cool through our window. And we've got a Holland America ship over there as well. It looks like quite an industrial port compared to some other uh, Caribbean ports that we're usually in. We're on the island of Grand Bahama in Freeport and this is the only destination that this ship comes to. It just does two nights cruises here and back but you do have the option of staying here as well so what you can do is sail over stay for a few days in the resort then come back so it's a little bit like a ferry anyway for breakfast there's lots of different things there's a toast and bagel station you've got all of your american breakfast favorites like sausages and bacon and eggs there's also an omelette station where you can get an omelette made with lots of different fixings and things like that you've got lots of sweets as well so lots of pastries and little things like that you've got waffles and pancakes you've got a fruit station then a very small little continental section so it actually looks pretty good it is a very small selection compared to other cruise lines but it looks pretty good anyway and we've got this lovely seat i went for a lovely omelette and it's got ham cheese and onion in it let's have a little taste of it shall we that's really nice it's got a lot of filling in there really good also got an everything bagel as well with some cream cheese and it's got lots of little seeds and stuff on there i've got sausages in a pancake form where are my long little sticky Sausages gone, they're a very different look. It's a circle, a la McDonald's. I'm not used to putting this form of sausage in my mouth, I really am not, so let's have a little taste, shall we? That's very fatty, 
very fatty and oily. That's not very good at all. <laughs> what did you get, David? I basically got the same as you. I just got bagel and a cheese omelette as well. One thing we've noticed that everything that comes from the water supply, including the teas, the coffees, the juices, and the water itself, uh, tastes really funky. It's got a really odd taste to it, and it's almost like a chemical taste. It's actually quite like, unpleasant, to be honest. So we're having to stick to just sodas and bottled water, because it everything tastes like it it's really bizarre uh, one thing that i have noticed is that there is a lot of upselling everywhere on the cruise so they're trying to sell drinks and other things everywhere if you want to get off here in grand bahama uh you can go and do your own thing diy get a taxi to a beach or something or you can book an onboard shore excursion uh, to stay in a resort for the day something like that an all-inclusive resort and it's about the same price as normal cruise lines so it is quite pricey if you want to do it that way but again you're guaranteed to get back on the ship on time. So we've got nothing planned here for Grand Bahama for the day. So we're just going to get off and have a little wander around the port. As I said earlier on, this is the only port that Margaritaville at sea calls at. So basically it's just to and from Palm Beach to uh, the Grand Bahama. And if you want to stay here, you can as well. So you can do something called a cruise and stay. So basically you can book uh, a hotel on the island and then use this as a kind of ferry there and back, which is pretty cool as well. But most people just do the round trip, which is two nights. So let's get off and see what there is in port, shall we? So we are off, bless David. He's still in a lot of plane with his toothache. So he's not gonna be on camera too much today because he doesn't want to talk, bless him. I feel so bad for him. There's nothing you can do. We're just waiting for those antibiotics to kick in. But here we are on Grand Bahama. It's very windy, very sunny, but super windy. The ship is tiny. I can't get over how small she is. She does look like a ferry size, but she's looking good on the outside for how old she is. She's very well painted. She looks very respectable. So strangely enough, this port is actually owned by Margaritaville at sea. So the only ships that stop here are Margaritaville. As we said though, there is those other carnival ships and Holland America shipping as well. But yeah, there's not really much at the port at all, really. Only you've got a few little stalls and shops and a bar, and that's about it. If you want to go anywhere else, you're going to have to get a taxi because it is a bit of a walk if you were going to walk it. So we're back on the ship. There really isn't much to do on Grand Bahama. As you can see, you've got to get off and do something properly because this is a really isolated port. Now, it's been a strange one, guys. I mean, we weren't expecting luxury, but this ship is absolutely ancient, and she really is ready for the uh, scrapyard. It's by far the most, I don't even know how to put it, it's by far the worst ship we've ever sailed on. She really doesn't feel like any other cruise ship out there. If you've been on any modern cruise ship with any other big cruise line, MSC, Royal Caribbean, Norwegian Princess, anything like that, you'll know what a real cruise ship is. This feels more like a ferry. And I think this is what the experience is more about. It's more about being a booze cruise and just a quick vacation or somewhere different. I wouldn't even really call it a cruise to be honest. So if you're wanting to go on a nice cruise with lovely food and lovely things to do and stuff, this one is not for you. It really isn't. Can't really say anything apart from not coming back on this blooming cruise ship. Holy moly, bloody awful. Absolutely bloody awful in every way. One thing I do have to say is that I'm really disappointed in Margaritaville because as we said before, we've stayed there before and we've visited lots of their resorts and things and they're so lovely but this really isn't on the same level as that. So I guess that's why we're, we're disappointed mainly. Oh my gosh, guys, a lot of very, 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 very drunk people tonight. It's a bit crazy, actually. It's like being on a giant bar where everybody's hammered, apart from me and David. David's an antibiotic, so we're not drinking. I'm staying with solidarity with David. <laughs> right, let's go find this theater. We're here at the front of the ship to see the production show, the Jimmy Buffett production show. Let's go see what it's like. Wow, I rather enjoyed that show. It was really, really good. It was all about Jimmy, Jimmy Buffett. Didn't know any of the songs because we're from England and he didn't really get there, but really fantastic singers. All live music as well. A lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. It was really very good. Fantastic little production that was. And very surprising because we didn't expect um, entertainment on board. Oh, so we've changed our mind. We were going to go to the steakhouse, but we had a conversation with a few people who said it wasn't very good last night. And for $55 each, which is almost half the price of the cruise, we thought we'd come here instead. So we're at Frank and Lola's Pizzeria and it smells wonderful. So you can get a whole pizza pie for about $6.99. Oh guys, David has got awful toothache. Bless him, we've got an emergency appointment tomorrow morning between cruises. It's awful. Oh, he's still got a sense of humor though, bless him. He doesn't look well. Oh my gosh, so a blooming robot just brought us our pizzas. That was totally and utterly unexpected. 
I had no idea that was going to happen. Anyway, I went for the hot Hawaiian pizza, yes. I went for pineapple on a pizza again. St. David's went for the spinach pizza, which is a vegetarian pizza. It looks really wonderful. Oh, well, call me Princess Peach, because Mario, you've provided me with some delicious pizza. Really yummy, guys. Super hot, super fresh. A nice thin crust as well. Very good pizza indeed. Treat yourself. So that's it for our exceptionally short Margaritaville cruise on Margaritaville at sea. We do hope you enjoyed this video. Please don't take it too seriously guys. There's something for everybody and only because we didn't like it doesn't mean that other people won't like it. That's the good thing about the world. If we were all the same it'd be super boring but we do really appreciate you watching and coming along on this adventure. So do hit that subscribe button and the like button because we've got so much cool stuff coming. Big thank you as well to all of our patrons. You guys are awesome. If you'd like to support us a little bit more, you can join our Patreon crew. By doing so, you receive extra benefits such as behind the scenes videos, we do a monthly Zoom chat, plus we upload our videos early, and most of all, they have no adverts, so no commercials on them, so you get to watch them ad-free. You can find out more about becoming a Patreon by clicking the link in the description section below. That's it till next time. Happy, Happy cruising! cruising.